Okay, so what causes a slice or let's just say more of a fade pattern than we want or the inability to hit a draw? And this can be pretty frustrating for people because most people have heard enough instruction either in person or online to tell them that we need to swing the club from inside out, have the face fairly square to the path to produce draw shape. Now, you can make this happen with, let's call it a, an open face in the backswing or weak wrist conditions is what we're gonna talk about today with this wrist sensor. With a lot of manipulation, a lot of manual shallowing of the club with the hands, a lot of flipping with the club. These are not ways to make this happen on a consistent basis. And then you get the person who can the occasional time make this happen and then for the most part, it's not gonna happen the way they want. They're gonna hit pushes, push slices, all kinds of stuff that just sucks. So most of what occurs in the downswing is gonna to respond to the orientation of the face. And the, the face of the club is not just set exclusively by the grip dynamically. So you can grip it as strong as you want, but if your wrist conditions at the top are weak, so I'm showing you what would be called an extended lead wrist, which just means there's quite a bit of cup here, quite a bit of angle, versus a flex lead wrist, which is a little bit flatter. The extreme of that would be here, which is more your DJ or John Rom. We don't necessarily have to get this far, but let's just say the flatter wrist is a bit more of a desirable position. You can see on my live wrist readings here at the top, if I slightly flatten the wrist, I see a flex number on the right. And if I extend the wrist, I see a plus number extension. So basically a high plus number with extension is an open face. The zero or close to zero flex number is pretty square, as long as the grip relationship is strong enough. So you will get some people that are super strong with the grip, but they are extended at the top. That is a bit of a nightmare scenario. That's going to lead to the occasional square one that you hit well, but it's going to have a lot of volatility with start line, curvature, all kinds of stuff. Most people will be a little bit more uniform with it. They'll have a weak grip and they will have weak wrist conditions at the top. Wrist is always going to be a little bit in extension at address. Obviously it would be pretty strange to have a flex wrist that would require a pretty bizarre grip. So we'll always see a bit of an extension number at address. I'm going to show you extension at the top and extension at impact. So a plus number at address makes sense. A plus number at the top is not ideal and a plus number at impact is also not ideal. So there's our out to in, there's our open face, slice spin axis or side spin if you want to use that term. There's our high dynamic loft, high spin and low yardage relative to club head speed. So if I were to want to change this pattern, one, you do want to make sure the grip is at least slightly on the stronger side. We just don't want to go weak or too neutral. The same way I don't want to go excessively strong, not good either. So let's look for a fairly neutral grip. A little bit on the stronger side, so we have a nice face relationship to start with. And I'm just going to watch my screen here, and I'm going to send my wrist to a slightly flexed position at the top. So I'm going to feel for me, a couple things, I'm sending the label of my glove a little bit more to face the trail camera here. A uh, extended lead wrist will point more up at the ceiling and more in front of you. A flexed lead wrist will point a little bit more downwards and towards your down the line camera view. Okay, So here's me getting slightly flexed in the back, so we don't need to go crazy. Fairly neutral is nice. And I'm going to give myself the feeling of how would I deliver an even more flexible position at impact. So pretty neutral, even more flexed. So that's a zero at the top, which is good. Impact plus six, that's not great. So Yes, I got a pretty good ball flight out of that, and obviously that's a lot less weak with the face and wrist than the previous shot I showed you. But in an ideal world, I don't want the impact number to be plus from where the top of backswing number is. So if I'm zero here and zero here, great. If I'm zero here plus 10 here, technically I've added some degree of extension or cup in the downswing, not ideal. 
And oddly enough, I haven't been on the sensor myself in a while, and I didn't think that that would be my pattern, because I wasn't really trying to think about too much there. So let me try to focus a little bit more. I'm going to feel neutral up, and I'm going to need to feel a little bit like my knuckles of my lead hand are turning a little bit more down towards the ground. Let me strengthen that wrist up a little bit. Interesting. So this is, this is why this sensor is very good, because if you would have asked me what my numbers were going to be, I probably wouldn't have said that I was slightly extending into impact. I'll try one more. So I'm going to give myself the rehearsal. I'm neutral. And I'm extra flexed when I rehearse, because I need to push the feeling to be a little bit exaggerated to make it happen at full speed. Okay, better. So at least there I would say, I ultimately I actually flexed it more to the top. And then I did a little better job of maintaining it through impact. But when I do that, what you'll notice is the path changes quite a bit. So we've got an inside out path now, whereas before we had an outside in path. Face to target, let's just say face to path here is actually a good relationship. So if this number is a little bit lower than this number, we should have a bit of draw type tilt or spin to the ball, which we do. We will deliver less dynamic loft, we won't overly spin the ball, our launch angle will be a little bit more cooperative, and we will carry the ball a little bit more appropriate distance for the amount of club head speed. If someone hits a lot of pull fades or pull slices or push slices, and they want to hit a draw, in my opinion, the first thing you should be doing is addressing your wrist angles, obviously grip as well, but your wrist angles are your, your number one priority because I didn't really think about hitting a slice on the first shot that I showed you. I didn't really think about hitting a draw on the last shot that I showed you. It's just responding, and when I say the path is responding, my body's responding to a stronger wrist and face relationship. When it's a weak wrist and face relationship, in order to make this ball go anywhere near where I'm aimed, I have to pull the path across, I have to early release, and those two things are gonna cause that side spin appropriately. When the wrists are in a stronger position, at this point in the downswing, the face is definitely not open. It's easy for me to, if anything, let the path drop slightly behind the ball, rotate my body better, and produce a little bit of draw spin instead. That is a little bit more neutral at the top, and at impact, I actually got a slight bit of flexion. So this is the type of pattern I'd be looking for. Around a plus 15 to plus 25 at address, very much close to zero at the top, and then slightly flexed through impact, should produce a pretty reliable draw shape for you. And that is good as well. Minus one and then minus four at impact. This is a pretty flat wrist. And we can see on the sensor that it's basically at minus one. So that's nice and flat. Increase it a degree, slight flexion. We maintain that flexion. And then when we make impact, you can even see from the face on camera, the wrist is in a nice strong position here. A nice in to out path, slight downward angle of attack, good amount of shaft lean, and the backspin is under control as well. We're getting a nice carry. Often people will add a little bit of club head speed this way without trying harder, and it will often give you a better dynamic lie angle. You'll be less toe down, and if anything, you'll be slightly toe up. My clubs are actually two degrees flat, so for me to deliver it toe up, I have to be coming through impact with a nice low handle, good side bend, and a little bit more passive release.